Hi, and welcome back to my series of podcasts about people with purpose. On today's episode, I'm joined by Dave Proud, who's a Kent-based business-focused video production specialist and has been helping business grow through their video marketing for well over nine years now. Um, initially coming from a background in music, uh, completing a degree as a professional musician, Dave was also drawn into the art of video production, utilizing his creative side, his passion grew towards creating high quality videos that resonated with other people's audiences. So now Dave's purpose is all about helping businesses succeed with their video marketing and helping them get in scene online as well. Um, I have to say Dave also runs a great YouTube channel. It's full of helpful tips and video production. And I really you know, highly recommend you go and check it out. I've, uh, I regularly watch it and I've learned loads from it. So Dave, it's an absolutely great to have you on it. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. How are you doing today? I'm um, not bad uh, today, thanks, Graham. It's uh, a nice Thursday morning, so it's uh, yeah, productive. It's new YouTube video day for me, so after this, I'm going to be posting my latest video and getting the promotion underway. Brilliant. That's really good to hear, mate. So just uh, for everyone, anybody watching or listening to this, give us a little bit of an intro. Tell me a little bit about yourself, how you got into the you know the, the video production world. Where did it all start for you? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you the, the short version of the story. So as you <laughs> said, I studied music at uh, university. I was a playing guitar as you can see I've got a guitar in the background and when I went there I sort of I had the focus of since I was very young I was like I want to be in a band and I want to go on tour and that's all I want to do I went down there and I realized to be a musician in today's age uh, you need to be a session player you need to be playing in wedding function bands you need to teach um, you need to do all these things and they didn't interest me at all I just wanted to play guitar in a band so I left a bit <laughs> disillusioned really i got in an, my own band i bought a camera so we could go on tour and make a, a tour video diary and then i started working at a music school up in london at the end of every year they have graduation at shepherd's bush and pie where they get all the student bands to audition put on this massive gig and uh, all the staff have to work the gig they all have their own jobs it's my first week and i was like well i've got this camera do you want me to film it and they're like yeah why not got nothing else for you to do um <laughs> So I did that and they liked it so much that they started paying me to do it, which meant I could invest in better and more equipment. And after a couple of years, they started giving me so much work that I could quit the job and do it full time, which was great. Um, up until uh, yeah, up until a couple of months later when a new marketing person came in and went, oh, I've got my own crew that are going to come and do it. <laughs> You're like, oh, first business lesson learned. Don't pull your eggs in one basket. Um, but since then, um, I started moving more into the the business side of things and making business videos. I still do a bit of music on the side, but I do it more as fun because musicians don't really have any money. Um, <laughs> so I do that. I do enjoy doing the business videos, but obviously my passion for music, I, I do that as like yeah. more of a hobby. So is that would you say that music influenced? So it's very much about your journey from being a musician to a video. I mean, did you see that coming at all or is it just, you know, as, as you say? Oh, this, well, this is the thing, right? So I, I look back, uh, when I first started doing this, I, I was thinking, oh, I've sort of just fallen into this. I felt like a bit of an imposter. Um, <laughs> then looking back, I used to think, I used to go to all these gigs all the time and I always used to take a camera with me. It was like an old little digital camera, one of the first ones. And the video quality was, you know, less than an old, old style brick tv you know um but i always used to say camera with me and i always used to film it all i used to, always used to make little films with my friends and things like that as well so yeah. it's always something i've done but never really focused on doing it but it does work really well with the the music side of things because a lot of video editing is all based around rhythm and music i mean especially with a lot of the stuff i do i have a track running underneath and then i edit to the track so it all it all plays into what i do as well leveraging everything you learned as a musician musician to video editing and video production in general yeah and it's that sort of creative outlet as well unfortunately i don't get to play guitar much anymore because i'm focused on running and growing a business <laughs> and it's saying i'd love to get back to but yeah it's taking that creative output and putting it somewhere else because editing you gotta you can't it's not just taking two clips and going right you start this one here end it there start this one here and the next one there. It's about finding creative ways to move between shots to keep people's attention and focus and getting a message across. So it's creativity just in a 
different way? I mean, for me as a photographer, it's that I want to say the geeky side, the, the, all the kit and the technology and the science and all the rest of it. But you still got all that, you know, the art form, the creation and, and everything else. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing that's the same for you. Yeah, I mean, you're probably going to agree with this, but, you know, you can I'll put it in as an analogy of guitar. You could give the best guitarist in the world the worst, cheapest guitar and he'll make it sound amazing. And it's the same with video and photo equipment. So you could buy, you know, a £10,000 camera, but if you don't know what you're going to, you're doing, it's going to look like you shot it on your phone. Whereas if you know what you're doing, you can take your phone and make it look like a £10,000 camera. Yeah, very much so, definitely. I mean, it, it, I mean, a lot of this seems to be, you know, it's happened to you and you've done a lot, all of this yourself, but is there anybody that's kind of helped you on your journey? Anybody that's inspired you? Um, any mentors or anybody like that i'm self-taught so I, I do believe that making mistakes is the best way to learn <laughs> so i've made a lot of mistakes but now it's got me to a point where i know what i'm doing i mean there's people i follow on youtube and things like that they're big youtubers with loads and loads of followers like peter mckinnon or james matthews who's a, who's a british guy from essex um so people like that is i use for inspiration if i'm getting a bit stale on on the way i'm shooting i'll have a look at some of their stuff and go oh how did they do that and try and recreate it and not copy what they're doing but use it as inspiration for yeah. try something new myself then i i haven't had any sort of traditional training in that way so it's you know <laughs> learning a bit here a bit there and sort of putting it all together myself no, it's interesting. I mean, I'm, I think I have a very similar um, outset. I mean, I have done workshops and things like that going forward, but I think your, your uniqueness comes from, because it's come from you, it's not, you're, you're taking inspiration yeah. from your own rather than a course. I mean, would you recommend that somebody does a course in videography or video production? Is that something yeah. that you recommend? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I, everything I've, I've learned hasn't been on YouTube. I have done paid courses as well, um, especially around lighting, editing, color. I mean, that's something a lot of people don't look at with their videos because a lot of videos shot on phone are self-colored. As you know, from working in a raw format, when you get that, it's you've got all this room to play with. You can change the color from warm to cool, or you can uh, change the shadows so they're really black or they're, they're quite light and it all affects the image. So things like that. Free YouTube training is good, but it's very surface level. So you're only gonna get so much. Whereas if you pay for a proper course, you know, if you pay three, 400 pounds for a course, you know, you're gonna get a lot better information, a lot better value from it. I think what a lot of people, um, in my experience, almost undervalue what you do. Um, you know, they think it's a case mm. of turning up, putting a, a camera up, doing your video, and, and and then it's all done. But there's a lot to it, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. I mean, as I said, it's all good having all the equipment, but if you don't know how to use it, it's pointless. Um, that's kind of why I've been doing a bit more live streaming now. Since I've just got all this new equipment, I can do live streams and change between camera angles and have a computer feed. So I've been live streaming as I've been editing videos and I've had some great feedback of people going, oh, I didn't know how much actually went into this. People just think it's yeah. putting the clips together, but it's a lot more than that. It's telling a story and the order that you put the shots tells a different story. So that's really important. I want to do a, a video in the future about that, actually. And you can take three shots, like a, a man looking uh, an object or an animal or something like that, and then back to the man again. And depending on what order you put those in, it's going to give a different feeling. And obviously there's things like music as well. You've got to pick the right music because that portrays so much. It might be really quiet in the background underneath you speaking, but it gives an atmosphere to everything. Mm. And again, that, that's another really, really good tip to give your videos a bit more life. Um, a lot of the videos that you see online that are self-shot have got no music underneath them, so they're quite dry. Whereas if you just have a little bit of music really quietly in the background, it just ups the production value a little bit and gives it more of a mood. That's a brilliant tip, that very much so. I, I think you, you mentioned sound. I mean, um, in my mind, I mean, um, my experience with video, sound is just as in, if not more important than the actual quality of the video as well is that the same advice you would sort of suggest yeah um so there's a really good test i can't remember who did it online um but basically they they took the same clip and they made the audio really bad but the picture is really good and then uh, the picture really bad but the audio is really good and so the one with the 
bad picture but a good good audio you can keep watching it you can engage in it but if you do it the other way around if you've got a really bad distorted audio or you can't hear what you're saying then you're not getting anything from it it's really hard on your brain it's really taxing so you just want to get away from it and click away from it straight away let's let's move on a bit a little bit so in terms of the business side of, of what you do what, what's the last sort of 12 months been for you um, you know, how's it been business-wise? What are you seeing in the markets? You know, how's the industry? Wow, well, that's a question. <laughs> so, I'm a, no, I'm good this. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I I started working with a business coach at the middle in the middle of last year. Before that, I was kind of I was sort of drifting a little bit, to be honest. I was making a decent amount of money, and you know, I've I've got my own house, and I was quite comfortable. And then she sort of sparked in me a a desire to want to do more like I always thought I just want to do do things on my own you know if I need extra cameramen I can hire them in lighting people all that I can I can hire people in but then I realized no I want a business I want to grow I want a team behind me so that if I want to go away for a month I'm going to keep earning money so that's been my main focus and obviously with what's been happening over, over the last couple of months it's sort of put everything back a bit because business was growing. I was starting to get bigger clients. People are starting to see the value of video a lot more. Um, but then obviously lockdown happened and nothing was happening in terms of video. I need to go out and shoot people. I can do like online training videos. So I've just finished one for a digital analytics conference called Measure Camp. They happen around the world. And it's a little bit different because it's an unconference. So you turn up and there's no planned sessions for the day. They have a board and people go, all right, I want to talk about this, pin it on the board in the room that they're going to do it. And so translating that to an online project was quite hard. So I had to do a range of videos showing how to use this new networking um, website called Remo and how to do it. So stuff oh. like that I can carry on with. But Going out and shooting, that's only just started to open up. And obviously, you need to be really, really careful about that. Mm -hmm. But the positive I'm seeing is over the last couple of months, people have had a lot more spare time to work on their business rather than in their business. Yeah, that's right. around. Um, so people have been experimenting with video a lot more and seeing the benefits that they can get from it, you know, uh, especially if you're doing it yourself you're putting your personality out there and people are getting to know you and if they get to know you they get to like and trust you and then when they need your services they're going to come to you so the benefit i see from doing that is people are doing it themselves which is great and i always say people should as they grow they're going to have less time to do it themselves and then they're going to hire someone like me to come in and do it for them now that's great advice as well for, for any business to um adding value um throughout so even it's you know some might argue that why would you teach someone how to do it themselves? Because they want to be paying you to do it. But at the same time, it's well, you know, not everybody can afford that kind of, yeah. you know, level of production and, and, you know, what they actually really want. So, yeah, that's really good advice. That I, I really like that. I mean, I think, think for us, it's sort of our job with people who are at that level is to help them on their journey. I mean, it doesn't take much time does it to give a bit of advice to people to up their quality of what they're doing and they're, they're going to appreciate that so mm. much in the long run and you're going to turn them more into a long-term customer rather than someone you know they're going to stretch their budget and get you in to come and do a few videos and then they're not going to be able to afford you for maybe another year or two rather than that you're helping them build, build their business so they're going to be able to afford you a lot more uh, regularly you said it yourself that known like and trust um, attitude that sort of is what you want you want to build that relationship and I think that's um, I mean would you say that's part of your uniqueness yes I think every business should be doing it really uh, people buy from people not from businesses I think the thing that sets me apart is the the after work support that I give so it's not just I've made you a lovely video sent it to you we transfer or Dropbox whatever there you go it's yours do with it what you want because that's not your speciality. You don't know how to promote videos. There's ways to set it up on YouTube um, and Facebook and all, all platforms like this to actually get it in front of your audience. So I like to help businesses after I've handed the video over to give help and advice or to do it for them to actually 
get that video found online through keywords, through thumbnails, through promotion, all these different things. Yeah, I like that as well. It's very much, um, it, it, that's what separates you, isn't it? That sort of aftercare service. And, and, and it, again, mm -hmm. it's not just about the videos that you're creating. It's about the support, how to upload them, how to use them. And it's not, it's, it's almost marketing as well that you're helping people with as opposed to just creating videos yeah i mean i'm not a marketing expert i couldn't tell you how to properly set up a, a google adwords or anything like that but i can tell you how to set your video up properly on youtube that it helps you google seo or how to cross promote your videos between different platforms to to bring in more views so it's it's about niching down really isn't it you you want to be an expert in one field rather than a generalist that's sort of good at everything mm -hmm. what would be your sort of top five tips at the moment you know given what's going on in the world and given what's you know happening in business and the markets in general you know what could you what, what words of wisdom could you share with us today all right first one biggest one just get started because everyone is seeking perfection in what they do and you know you you, you look at your business as this thing that you don't want to put out anything that's not quite right but number one people know that you're human and you're not an expert at video so just seeing that you put something out they're going to forgive a little bit more especially at the moment two is you're not going to improve you're not going to get perfection unless you actually put stuff out into the world and learn from your mistakes and make them better so stop putting things off stop saying oh, i'll be a better time to do this then or you know just spend five minutes Write down maybe some bullet points of something you want to talk about. Turn your camera on and film it. And you might look back at it and go, oh, I'm not, I'm not so, so sure about this. But I bet you if you put that out on social media, you'll get a lot of great comments on it that's going to really boost your confidence and get you doing it again. So it's going to make you really uncomfortable and put you out of your comfort zone. But that's where you grow. That's where you learn. So just get on and do it. The other big resistance is confidence on camera. Everybody is exactly the same. Absolutely everyone. Me, I'm sure you're the same, Graham. When you start doing this, it's terrifying. You know, yeah. you, you're stuttering. You, <laughs> you lose your words all the time. But it's practice. So one way to do that is to get comfortable actually talking to a lens. Because um, it, it is very unnatural at first. You're used to talking to a person who gives you feedback on their face. So every morning... Get your phone and just talk to it for a minute. It can be what you had for breakfast, what your plans are for the day. This video is not going to go anywhere. You can literally delete it as soon as you've recorded it. But it's the practice of actually getting used to speaking to a camera. And then once you've done that, you can start to watch your videos back a little bit, which will knock your confidence at first. But then you'll see, oh, I want to do that differently. I want to do that differently. And it, um, you know, you start to build your confidence in yourself and what you're doing until you're finally ready to actually put something out into the world. So it kind of goes against the first point where I said, just do it. But you've got to get to the point where you're actually confident enough to film something proper in front of camera. The, I'm going to make a video about this soon. But one thing I really want to start getting people to do more is to think about what they're shooting. Because when you take pictures, when you take video, if it's on your phone especially, everyone does it exactly the same way. They're at their head height. It's all from your perspective. And at what, that's why most video and photography all looks the same if it's, if, if it's amateur shot. Move your feet, you know, put your camera down a little bit and, and see what sort of mood that gives you, you know, the, with the high angle. It might, if, if it's for you, it might make you look really powerful and like a superhero. Or try getting really close to something. So it's like macro photography. So it gives you a different perspective on the world. These are the things that people, they're scrolling through and they go, oh, that's a little bit different. And it's going to engage them a little bit more and make them want to pay attention. The other thing I'd say is definitely, we've touched on it already, audio. Spend 40, 50 pounds getting a, I don't want to rustle it too much, but getting a microphone like this, um, which can plug into your phone or plug into your camera. Because... Yeah. You know, if I was using the audio on my camera now, you'll get all the echo of the room and my voice wouldn't be really clear. But because I'm using this microphone, you can hear perfectly what I'm saying. You use one as well, don't you, Graham? Very much so. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So audio is so important because if people 
want to hear your message. There's no point if they can't actually hear what you're saying. I think that's probably <laughs> enough tips. You don't want to overwhelm people. It's all about you know one what? thing at a time, isn't it? That was Picking brilliant. One thing. Mean, every, yeah. Everything you said, I it's the same things that I tell people as well. You know, we, we, although I'm more focused on the photography and I do the interviews and um, obviously there's a little bit of crossover for what we do, but it's the same advice that I would give as well. You know, practice, 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 getting yourself out there. The, you said it yourself and I just want to go back to it that, you know, where you grow is outside of the comfort zone, you know, pushing yourself a little bit beyond that. And it actually goes back to something else. You said earlier, you, 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 you took on a, a business coach as well. I'm guessing, or I'm assuming, that that's kind of helped you with that sort of stepping outside your comfort zone from a business perspective as well. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> when I started working with her, she's asking the questions, and I'm like, I don't. So like, what's, your, what's your profit forecast? I'm like, well, what? <laughs> so it's um, even just, you know, putting the processes in place of knowing uh, what, uh, what my most busy months are, where I'm looking for work, uh, my monthly target. So I know, you know, if I'm a bit behind my target, where I can go to try and find new work. So if that for me, you know, I've gotten used to talking in front of camera. I'm confident in my work and what I'm doing. The business side of things, I'm getting there. But yeah, it's it's scary when someone's asking you these these questions that you should know, but you had no idea existed at, at all. Yeah, but on the flip side of that is that you're you're now moving out of that comfort zone and you're taking your business to new levels. And I think that's the point that you know is being made. You know, you people want to do video, so stepping just a little bit outside that comfort zone means that then they get better and better at it. Your business coach. It's is, a mindset. Absolutely. It's a mindset shift. So it's it's sort of if. Um, if you see fear as something to avoid, then you're never going to go outside your comfort zone. You're never going to grow. But if you see fear, there's two ways of looking at it. You can see it as excitement. Say, so I'm not scared. I'm actually excited about doing it. Then it sort of switches the way you're doing things. And the other way is thinking, if I'm scared of doing this, I know I'm going to learn something and I'm going to grow. So just throwing yourself at it. I, I love that. That's very much, um, I mean, that's kind of when we met through networking and, I think that's why we hit it off as, you know, we have very similar mindsets about, you know, taking yeah. sort of uh, taking things to the next level and not being afraid to step out a little bit. Yeah, it's still scary, still gets the heart racing yeah. and, and all of those kinds of feelings. I'm, I'm human too. But at the same time, the more you do it, the more you get addicted to it as well. And the more, and it, it's like a compound effect. Yeah. I mean, do you get, do you still get the, the terror and the fear when you working with a new client and you hand over work for the first time are you still like what well, are they gonna like it yeah it, it's it, <laughs> i think that's i think that's for all creatives to a certain extent you know we we're very proud of what we do and i'm sure you are as well you know the work that you've done you've put effort into it you've worked hard for it of course you want to be appreciated you want the client to be happy and you want the client to to get the most from it and and of course i feel that way and as as you do who's yeah, asking i mean it's it's yeah it's, it's, it's a conversation um, <laughs> absolutely I'm it's just, just a bit dismissive it, <laughs> it's a bit ridiculous when you think about it because these people They've seen your work and they want to work with you. So they already seen what you're doing. And then still in your head, that's a little thing when, because obviously I like it when you send over a video edit and they come back within within an hour, go, oh, this is great. But yeah. if it's any longer than an hour, I'm thinking, oh, they, <laughs> they, don't, they don't like it. And they're trying to find out a way of telling me. Yeah, but that, that's fine. I mean, that's the human side, isn't it? It's the, you know, yeah. Like, as a business owner and we work very hard for what we what we do and you mm -hmm. know and i'm sure it's the same you get those testimonials come in and it's a it's a although it's not why i i like it and i'm sure the same for you is that it is a it is a boost to morale it is a boost to confidence yeah. that you are on track of what you're doing and, and and clearly i've seen the testimonials that people leave for you and uh in fact, I've left testimonials for your YouTube channel because you know I've, yeah. you know, whilst I know a little bit about video and photography, I've learned stuff from your video channel as, as well, and it's it's yeah, uh, we all learn from each other, don't we? Definitely, it's that, um, and I I get probably boring people with it by ever saying that, you know, it's the a rising tide lifts all the boats in the harbour, and yeah. I don't know who originally said it, 
but it's that if we work together, we're, we're helping that tide rise. You know, it doesn't matter that there's crossover for what we do. It's, it's very much about having that sense of purpose, which is what this is all about, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I always see that with other video production companies. Um, I'll always, if they're in a networking event, I'll go up and talk to them or I'll seek them out because they're, it's not competition, really especially in what we do, where it's very creative. We're going to have different styles. We're going to be working with different types of clients. Uh, our services are going to be slightly different. Pricing might be different. Um, so there's one that I know in Gravesend who, you know, their minimum job value is about £4,000 because they do the big corporates up in London. That's a bit above my level at the moment. But I know by talking to them, I might need them as cameramen. I might need some editing doing. Or it might go the other way. They might need an extra cameraman for a day. So you're only going to benefit by talking to people in the same field as you. And you're probably going to learn something to benefit your business anyway. Definitely. You can't do this alone. Yeah, I think that's, nah. that's, uh, that's very much a part of it. So, I mean, that's brilliant. I mean, you know, I, we, we could probably talk for hours, but obviously we, we, <laughs> we are. We do need to sort of like, you know, move forward a bit. So you talked about you know where you've come from what you're doing at the moment but what's what's next for you what's the future um you've mentioned business coaching and growing your business what's your big plans yeah so the the long-term plans are by i mean i have to retool them a little bit i haven't really given them much thought since lockdown because i'm trying to get like, survive and grow but there's a few things that i've got going on so new website coming with a new lead generation series on um five things that you need to do before starting a YouTube channel. Um, from that, then I'm going to move into, I want to start doing online courses. So if anything like this happens again, I'm a bit more secure. So the first one's going to be about how to edit your own videos using a really cheap piece of software. And it's going to help take you, take your videos to the next level. Um, so they're the sort of next two or three months sort of goals. After that, it's growing a business so i want by the end of next year i want two employees and then by the end of the year after that i want an office five years i want five employees that's the the long term term goal i just need to work hard to get there impressive it, it, the fact that you've even got goals um, i speak to so many people that don't have a clue where they're going to be in the next five years you were very precise i want this i want this i want this and that is something worth pursuing as well definitely yeah it's uh, if you go out driving you don't go out driving without knowing where you're going do you you just end up wandering around and wasting petrol you've got a clear destination and normally you're trying to work out the shortest or quickest route to get there so why would you not do that with your business why would you not have this plan and then try and figure out your route to get there because otherwise you're going to just carry on in the same situation. All about getting off that hamster wheel and taking it somewhere else. I liked that there was something else you said earlier as well that that um, made me sit up, and that was the idea that uh, as a service-based business, being able to say, right, I am going to step away for a couple of months. I am going to take some time out. Yet that business is still going to be operating. I think that's a really good point as well. Especially, you know, it's yeah. going to be scalable and growth, and um, it's really yeah great to hear you say that because so many service businesses. Yeah don't think that way you know, yeah they, i mean they... there's the something that was made very apparent to me was there's a, a very hard ceiling if i want to keep doing it by myself you know there's yeah. well there's only so many hours in a day and there's only a maximum amount of what i can charge to, to do stuff so you know there there is a ceiling whereas if i'm building more of a, a video production agency there's no ceiling there i could have multiple teams um, i could go into different fields and different areas so it's opening myself up to to do more and to help more businesses. And, you know, it, uh, as I said, it's being a specialist. So I'm a specialist in video marketing, but, you know, I have my strong areas and my weak areas. Like I think my color grading could be a lot better, but that is a job, like literally is a job called a colorist. And that's all they do is color video. So I'm never going to get to that level. So why would I not want to aim to have a team around me where, someone's the best at sound someone is the best at direction and helping talent which probably would end up being me because i really enjoy doing that mm -hmm. uh best at coloring best at editing you know why would i not want to have all people around me that are better than me to be honest but there, there's a i forget who it is now but there's a, a famous 
coach or, or whatever they you know um personal development and and they said that that you know the 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 smartest person in the room is the one that's surrounded by people that are smarter than they are. And, and I think that's yeah. really, uh, you know, where you want to go, where you want to be as a great, and it's, it's difficult being a service-based industry. I'm the same because I like to get out there with my camera. It's hard to let go of some of yeah. those things sometimes. I mean, we've, we've already touched on it. Um, you know, the new website coming, how else, if anybody wants to get hold of you, where's the best place to find you website, where else? Yep. So, um, on Facebook, it's facebook.com slash Proud Business Productions. Um, my handle on Instagram and Twitter is Proud Buzz Prod. So it's Proud, B U S P R O D. Gotta love those handles. Um, YouTube.com slash Proud Business Productions is my favorite place for you to follow on because every Thursday I release a new video. Um, and it's all based around. Uh, there's two different taxes. One is making better content with the, what you've got. Um, and then the other one is getting your videos found on YouTube yourself. And I, I try and break it down and make it as easy as possible. Or if you want to check out some of my work and where my new website is live, it will be great to check out as well is proudbusinessproductions.com. What I'll do is I'll make sure that all those links are in the video. And then when we share this as well, mm -hmm. I'll make sure that they go on any posts and stuff around it. So, um, yeah, definitely worth yeah. Uh, following up. I think we're kind of there. I think perhaps we could probably talk for hours and hours, especially if we start getting into the real geeky stuff that I know that oh, we both don't. love to talk about. Um, <laughs> but we won't today. We, we, it's, uh, that's not what we're about. I mean, just to sort of summarise up, I think it's fair to say that you've certainly got purpose. You know, I love the fact that you're looking to expand, you're looking to turn from a certain, you know, the one man band, you know, to, to scale your business, to help more businesses in the area as well and further afield. I think that's really, really something to admire. And, um, you know, I love the creative side as well, coming from that musician background to video and utilizing all your skills all the way through. I mean, I'm, it's an absolute pleasure to know you. And I'm so glad that we met through networking. I mean, is there anything yeah, else you want to say? Thanks. No, no, I, I really genuinely mean that. I think it's been really, really great to have you on here and to get to know you as well so i mean is there anything else you've got to say anything any sort of pearls of wisdom before we wrap up that you want to share with anybody i got else? i got one big pearl of wisdom if if you want to see this all flipped around and me interviewing graham about how he uses video then you need to check out the link in the description right now <laughs> That's fine. You know what? Let's plug your show on mine. That's fine. <laughs> totally no problems with that whatsoever. And you're on. You're on. Definitely. I'm more than happy to uh, for you to the, the boot to be on the other foot. And I'll make sure that we. Oh, we're going to. Yeah. The, don't worry. The other video is going to end the same way. You're going to be plugging your channel on mine. Oh, so no, don't I'm, worry. I'm not like that at all. <laughs> fantastic mate absolutely brilliant uh yeah i think i think that's it i think there's nothing more really that we could uh, well there is a lot more we could explore and perhaps <laughs> in the future we'll uh i'll get you back on in say six months time and see how your uh, yeah. expansion is uh, has happened i think that would be quite a nice thing to do to catch up on so um unless yeah. we've got anything else further to say i'm going to wrap it up and uh thank you very much graham it's been a pleasure it's been really fun good i'm glad you've enjoyed it i've certainly enjoyed it and as I say to anybody listening, you know, go check David out. Uh, you know, there's, there is crossovers with things, but we're both creative people. We both work together. We help each other out. And, and I think that's a key message that, that I certainly uh, like to share. And as you heard from David, that he's, he's very much on the same board with that. So everybody, thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. And um, yeah, until the next time, thanks very much.